Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of our Terraria modding tutorial series. Today we're going to learn how to create a sword in 1.4 because the syntax and pretty much everything has changed since 1.3 and I want to make an updated video for the people out there who might be a little bit confused watching the old videos. So let's go ahead and hop into uh, our .cs proj file and if you don't know where that is, once again we'll go ahead and go into our workshop, develop mods, open mod sources, and find the name of your mod. Find the .cs proj file and open it with Visual Studio 2022. And once you have that open, you can go ahead and navigate to the right hand side of your screen, open your items folder, and double click on the testsort.cs or whatever the auto-generated item was for your mod. Okay, so first things first. At the very top, we have using Terraria and using Terraria.id and using Terraria.modloader. These assembly references, as we like to call them, allow us to actually take code from Terraria and do stuff like item.damage and item.width and height. It allows us to access those properties of Terraria items. And over here we have our namespace, which just tells us, hey, this mod file is in our test mod folder, in the subfolder of our items. And then we have our public class name, which actually just tells us the name of this very specific code file. And then the type of item that this is, which is just a mod item. There are lots of different kinds of mod items, like uh, a mod projectile or uh, a mod NPC and a whole bunch of other stuff like that. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with coding in C Sharp, uh, public override void set static defaults is something that we like to call a method. And when you override a method, it allows you to change certain properties uh, of that method. So by overriding the set static defaults method, we can change our tooltip. So over here, we can say instead of this is a basic modded sword, we can say uh, contains the power of the gods. Okay, awesome. And our next method is called override void set defaults. So this method allows us to change the properties of our item, like the damage, the type of damage, and the width and height. So over here, we're going to set our damage to uh, 37. And we'll set our damage type to a damage class dot melee. You can change this to ranged, you can change it to magic, and all the other different kinds of classes. But for us, we're going to stick with melee. And then we can change our width and height to the size of our PNG file, which is already 40 because we're using the default PNG file. And then we're going to set our use time and use animation. So this is what determines how fast you swing the item. Uh, these have to match, otherwise you'll get a weird sync error where the swinging sound effect does not sync correctly with the actual swinging and use of the weapon. So make sure these are the same. 20 is pretty fast for a swing. But uh, we'll actually set this to 25 because the greater the use time and use animation, the slower the swing speed and use speed of an item is. So next we have our item.use style. This is going to determine the animation that plays when we use our item. One is the default for swinging, so we're just going to leave it at that. Uh, then we have our item.knockback, which is a float, which if you don't know what a float is, is a float is just a decimal value. So we can say 7.5f, and then we have a decimal value. But for our use style, if we try to say 1.5f, uh, you'll see we get an error there, because this use style right here is not the type of float, it is an integer, which means it can only be a whole number. So for our knockback, because it has the power of the gods, we got to give it a large knockback. So we're going to say 9.5, which is uh, a very strong knockback. Next, we have our value, and the value of 1 is equal to a single copper coin. So if we increase this to 1,000, that would be about 10 silver. And then we have our rarity, which determines the color of our item. 1 is for blue, 0 is the default white, and 2, I believe, is green while 3 is orange, 4 is uh, a different tinted orange, and 5 is the pink. I actually have a lot of these memorized because of uh, how many times I've been coding Terraria, but we'll just set this to 3 for now because this is a pretty powerful weapon. Uh, and then the U sound is the sound ID of item 1. So the U sound can be whatever you really want. It can be item 25, 1, 2, 3, whatever, but item 1 is the sound ID for a sword swinging. And below this, we have another line of code called item.autoreuse, and we set that equal to true. And what this does, it allows us to hold down our left mouse button uh, to automatically reuse this item without having to spam click, which I'm actually a pretty big fan of uh, because I really hate spam clicking. If you want to get creative, you can actually do something called item.shoot, and we can say projectile ID dot fireball. And this will actually make it so that our sword shoots a fireball whenever we swing it. So this is a really easy way to add a projectile to a sword. 
And because the fireball projectile is actually a hostile projectile, uh, we should probably change this to something like the enchanted beam, which will instead only hurt enemies, so we'll leave it at that for now. And then under our public override void add recipes, this is the method that allows you to add and customize your own recipes. So it's fairly easy to create a new recipe. All you have to say is recipe recipe equals create recipe. And then once you've defined the name of your recipe, which in this case is just recipe, we can then add ingredients to it. So here by default, we add the dirt block item ID and 10 of that dirt block item ID to the recipe. So to add an ingredient, all you gotta do is say recipe.add ingredient and then the item ID and then the number of that item that you wanna add to the recipe. And then to add a tile ID or the workbench that you wanna craft this item at, uh, you can just say recipe.add tile and then the tile ID. So this could be workbenches, sawmill, uh, or anvils. I'm gonna put mine to anvils and I'm gonna also make it so that you need 10 gold bars to craft this item, just because why not? And then to actually add the recipe into the game, you have to say recipe.register. And that's all you gotta do, it's pretty straightforward. So we're gonna press Command S because that is uh, how you can quickly save a code file. And if you forget to save your code files before you build and reload, uh, it's actually not gonna register those changes in code that you made. And actually one last thing I completely forgot about, over here where there's the commented out or the green um, part of this code here, Take out the first two slashes, so that way we can actually see this line of code. This line of code here, display name .set default, is what actually allows you to change the display name of your item. So let's go ahead and change this to uh, Sword of God or something like that. Okay, awesome, and now we are done making our sword. Let's go ahead and go into our workshop, develop mods, and build and reload. There shouldn't really be any errors because we didn't really code very many things. So let's go ahead and head back into single player and go on to a world and I recommend you get cheat sheet for this if you're going to be making a mod because that way you can easily just grab whatever item you want just by looking it up and if we hover over it you can see 37 melee damage 4% critical strike chance fast speed extremely strong knockback so if we spawn in a mother slime you can see there's pretty significant knockback considering that a uh, mother slime has a very high knockback resistance uh, compared to other monsters so that is a lot of knockback but that's it. That's all you really need to do to make a, a custom sword in Terraria. I hope this video helps some of the people out who are new to 1.4. If you didn't know, I'm also a game developer and I make a bunch of cool games and other stuff on my main channel. So if you want to support my work and also future tutorials, consider becoming a patron with the link in the description. And thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.